everybody. Hello, hello, hello. All right, so I told you about um, a deal that I did. And when I was telling you about that, I started to tell you that I had two houses, right? So let's talk about the second house now. So to recap, in case you didn't see the first video, um, I'm going over the 10 steps that you need to close a deal. And the first step, the first thing that you do, the first thing that I did to get both of these deals, to get all of my deals really, but especially these two, I talk to people. I tell them that I buy houses. And then the second thing I do is I ask for a lead. So when I'm talking to people and I say, hey y'all, I buy houses, I follow that up in the conversation with, do you know anybody who wants to get rid of a house? So in this particular situation, I was at my house, standing in my yard, talking to one of my neighbors, and the yard guy showed up, and he joined in the conversation, and I started all over with him. I buy houses, yada yada, blah blah blah. Do you know anybody who has a little house or something that they just don't want anymore? And he said, yes, I have two little houses that I don't want anymore. So the third thing that you need to do is follow up. The first thing you do is talk to people, ask for leads. When they tell you that they have a house that they don't want, or they know somebody with a house, or they've seen a house that looks like somebody doesn't want it anymore, follow up on those leads. All right, follow up. So as soon as he told me where these houses were, I wrote down the addresses and I drove by the houses. That's it. I drove by the houses. I looked at them. All right. And then I called him back. And I said, hey, I want to buy these houses from you. And he said, great. What will you give me? And I said, well, let me make you an offer. How about 10000 these are little bitty ugly crack houses. And he said, 10,000 total or 10,000 each? And I said, total. And he said that he couldn't take 10,000 total, um, but in, in the first video, I, I, at first I thought I agreed to give him 10,000 each, but I found my paperwork. And it turns out I, agree, I agreed to give him 6000 each for a total of $12,000, okay? $12,000, six each. I made him the offer and he said yes. I also told him that I was going to, I was gonna buy both houses for $6,000, all right? And so this is where the story is gonna split into two and we're gonna talk about the second house that I got, okay? So, the uh, fifth thing that you want to do after you talk to people, you ask for leads, you follow up, and you make an offer. The fifth thing you do is to sign the paperwork. Now, when you sign the paperwork, all of this has already come out. We've already negotiated. We've already talked through everything. And when I agreed to give my seller six thousand dollars, I told him that I would give him two hundred dollars a month until I paid off six thousand bucks. That's like four or five years. I mean, something just ridiculously long okay I, I'm not even gonna do the math you can do the math on that but I agreed to give him six thousand dollars at two hundred dollars a month so I met him and we signed the paperwork we signed the paperwork that day the same day I looked at it all right he's gonna give me terms he's gonna give me time I've got an awesome payment on these things and I'm gonna be able to make money all right so, after we signed the paperwork and he agreed to let me buy the houses for $6,000 and $200 a month, so it's an owner finance deal, the sixth thing that you do is you advertise the property. All right? So, I was getting two houses with one seller. I decided to, sell, to get rid of the first one first, and I did a video on that, but to summarize, I found somebody that gave me $5,000, they're gonna give me a total of $12,000 on the house, and my seller, instead of me making him payments and giving him six thousand, he agreed to take a one-time cash payment of three thousand. Uh, I paid closing and taxes and fees and stuff, so I ended up giving him three thousand dollars. I collected five thousand dollars down from my tenant buyer. 
I paid the taxes and fees. I ended up with 1500 bucks and the first house free and clear. All right, so I've made $1,500. I've got cash flow coming in of 300 bucks because these people still owe me $7,000. They're buying it from me for 12,000. So on the second house with the same seller, I started advertising it, all right? I got rid of the pretty one first and I made money and I knew this was gonna be a deal, so it's all good. So I started advertising the second house and I had one picture of it. I put it on Craigslist, Facebook, and Zillow. I went to a RIA meeting and I told people that I had this little ugly house. I was advertising the house, okay? I had it out there. I had it under contract for $6,000, but he'd already renegotiated the first one, so I knew that there was a good chance we were gonna be able to renegotiate the second house. So, as I'm advertising the property, we come up to step seven, find buyers. At that RIA meeting, I found a buyer. All right, there was a wholesaler at that RIA meeting and they decided to drive down to see my property and I told them that I had it advertised for 10,000 bucks and $10,000 is not a lot of money for people who are real estate investors. So I was gonna make 4,000. If I had to give him six, but I could sell it for 10, I was gonna make four grand on the deal, right? So my wholesaler drove down and looked at the house and they called me back and they made me an offer. They said, Wit, we can't give you 10000 What if we give you $4,000 for it? I have it under contract for $6,000 and they've offered me $4,000. So what do I do? That's step eight. Renegotiate with the seller. Renegotiate with the seller, step eight. I had a bird in the hand. I had a wholesaler who wanted to give me four grand on this house. I had it under contract for $6,000, so I called my seller back and I said, hey, I got somebody that wants to give me $4,000 for the house on 14th. Do you wanna make a deal? And he said, yes. I said, good. Do you wanna split it? Because my seller had $1,000 in this house. I said, do you wanna split it and you get 2,000 and I'll get 2,000 for getting rid of it? And my seller said, no, you know, I put the money out for this thing and I've been holding on to it. I think I should get $2,500 and you can take $1,500. So we're splitting $4,000. And I'm going to make $1,500 on a house that I have nothing involved in. Okay? $1,500 isn't a whole lot, but I bet it's, making, it's more than you're making this week at your job. So, I called my wholesaler back and I was like, great, we're going to take $4,000. And he said... Eh, I don't think I want to give you 4000 anymore. Seriously? He was like, yeah, I don't think it's worth 4000 Okay, no problem. But the important lesson here, guys, is... In number eight, in step eight, when I renegotiated with my seller, I knew that he went from wanting $6,000 for this house to accepting $2,500 for this house. You see how important that is? After I renegotiated, I found out that he would take $6,000 on payments for a couple years, but he would take $2,500 right now. So, it took me a couple days of pondering on this and trying to figure out how I can make it work and could I find somebody else and what could I do with this house and what was going to be the deal with this house. And then one day in the shower, because I have some awesome ideas in the shower, um, it occurred to me, I could buy this house for 2500 bucks. I have it under contract for six and I could pay him $200 a month for it, but... Remember the first house that I did with this seller? And I ended up getting $1,500? Well, that was last month. And the people that have been in that first house, they've already paid me one month rent at 300 bucks. So technically, I have $1,800 that I could use towards this $2,500 
on this little crack house. So I called my seller and I said, all right, how about I give you 2,500 bucks for this house? And we can close quickly and you won't have to wait and we won't do payments or anything like that. I I'm not going to make any money right up front, but I'm going to have a house with only $700 in it. And really, by the time my people in the first house pay me two more months at 300 bucks a month, I'm only $100 into this house. So after three months, I have two free and clear houses. And I'm still bringing in 300 bucks a month off the first house. So, step nine is to collect the money. I collected the money out of my own account on this one, okay? I took the $1,500 that I made on the first house plus the $300 that they'd pay me for the first month's rent, $1,800, I grabbed $700 out of my account and I went to closing. This month, when the people that are renting to own the first house pay me $300, I can use that to pay myself back and I'd only be $400 in this little old house ugly house that I'm going to let the termites eat. Okay? I'm not going to touch this house. I'm not going to flip it. I'm never going to go in this house. All right? So step 10 is to close. Once I've collected my money, once I've got a plan in place and I know when I'm going to get paid back, go to closing. So I got another contract signed by this seller that says that I can pay him $2,500 and close it and be done. So we did. So by the 1st of June, I'll have all my money back on my little crack house on 14th Avenue and I'll still be making money on it because this is what I'm going to do with the house. The proof is in the pudding, guys. When you say I buy houses, you actually need to buy houses. So I've used mostly somebody else's money to buy this house and then I borrowed 700 bucks for myself but I'll pay myself back over the next two months. I'm gonna put a big old pink Whitney Buys Houses sign in front of this house and I'm gonna collect leads after leads after leads after leads. Every single day, every single week, that house and that sign are gonna be working on my behalf. All right, it's better than a billboard. I own the land. It's better than, um, you know, Facebook ads because the proof is in the pudding. There's a house. I bought it. I have my sign in the front yard. I buy houses. I buy houses with cash. I buy houses on terms. That little crack house, even if it falls down and rots, is going to bring me hundreds of leads. I could make millions of dollars and be paid back completely total, no money involved in two months. All right, talk to people, ask for leads, follow up, make offers, sign the paperwork, advertise the property, find your buyers, renegotiate with the seller. Renegotiate, guys, that's where the fun is. That's where the magic happens, is in the renegotiation. Once you know what you got, renegotiate the fire out of it. Step nine is to collect the money. Even if you have to come out of pocket 700 bucks, you'll get paid back in a couple, hundred, a couple months. And then close. Close that thing. Put your sign in the front yard. Call it advertising. Collect leads. Become a real estate investing rock star. All right? It's real simple. It's 10 steps that you repeat and repeat and repeat until you're buying houses left and right every single day, all week long. All right? It's 10 steps. That's it. So that was one seller that I bought two houses off of, and I still have basically no money involved. Two houses free and clear. I paid... Uh, or I gave the seller $3,000 for the first one and $2,500 for the second one. 
Originally, we were $12,000 for both of them. By renegotiating, I bought them both for $5,500. Half price. So go out there and buy some houses. Bye, y'all.